Today I'm going to show you how your windshield wipers work to clean your screen. Now in this vehicle the windshield wiper motor is inside of the engine bay here. Now this wiper motor has two different settings. This is the low setting and this is the high setting. I'm going to start by removing this windshield cowl along the bottom. Now I'm going to remove this 12 millimeter nut that holds the windshield wiper arm on. Now I'm going to remove the arm. And then now starting from one end, I can remove the windshield cowl from the vehicle. Next I'm going to remove the motor. There's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it onto the firewall. Next I'm going to remove the three 10 millimeter bolts in the middle of the windshield near the passenger side wiper. Now in order to free the electric motor from the linkage, there's just this little ball joint thing that you... And then the linkage mechanism itself, I can just slide out. So here I've got the entire wiper system laid out here. We've got the wiper switch, the wiper motor, we've got the linkage assembly, the two wiper arms, as well as your reservoir tank with its pump and sensor. This here is the electronic motor, which is the heart of the wiper system. We've got the output shaft here that rotates this little arm, and this arm acts like a cam. Now this cam is more or less locked, and I can't move it, and that's because of the spiral gear system inside of here. And that prevents you from moving your wiper arms when your wiper are off. The wiper system consists of a DC motor here and a transmission gear system here. So I'm just going to demonstrate how the wiper motor works electronically. We have a slow setting here and then we have a fast setting over here. Now when you turn the switch off it will actually short these two pins over here and then if you stop it in a position other than its home position the wiper needs to know when to go back and stop so that it stops at the bottom of the windshield. So if you apply power to pin 6 here you'll see that it actually parks in its home position right there. No matter how much more power I apply, it won't rotate back around. Now when you turn the switch back on to continue wiping the wipers, it'll disconnect these two and then I can resume operation normally. I'm just going to go ahead and start taking this motor apart. Pull off the housing here. So this is the output shaft of the motor here. It has this little bearing on it to help it ride against the housing. We've got a spiral gear here. It engages with the gear on the inside here. And then I can pull out the shaft here. It's got a magnet on the inside there and your coils. This is the transmission side of the housing. You got a couple of brushes that brush up against the rotor here. Next I'm going to remove the screws for the housing here. Now I'm going to lift off this cover and this is what those brushes look like. Now mechanically speaking this is very simple. It's just a direct drive system where we have the spiral gear that will rotate and that will rotate this large gear and what happens here is you have a gear reduction where the motor is spinning really really fast but this gear is spinning really slow to match the appropriate riper speed and if you look underneath here you can see that the output shaft is also rotating as I rotate the motor. Now you can imagine how much force it takes to wipe a wiper across the screen so this gear reduction also serves as a torque multiplication and that will allow this little tiny motor to wipe such a big heavy load. Now this little linkage here acts as a small cam on the output side of the motor and that creates a little distance which will create a force in the sideways direction to move the linkage which will turn the wiper sideways. Now the electronic side of things are a little bit more complicated. Here we have this wheel that will rotate with the output shaft. Now I'm going to pop off this wheel here. So I've got my brother's old underwear here. It comes in really handy for these greasy situations. So you can see how simple this works. We've got this conductive ring on the outside of this plate here and that rotates along here where it's conducting with these contacts here. Now all the time it will be conducting all the way along the circle until it hits the home position where this circle is now discontinuous and this pin here will no longer receive power from these pins here therefore shutting off the motor. So moving on to the rod mechanism we all know that the motor will rotate continuously around and around like this however wipers will only move in one direction and then reverse in the other direction so the responsibility of this rod mechanism here is to take the rotational motion of the motor and turn it into repetitive translational motion that's useful as wipers. But you can see how the rotational motion of the motor will be turned into translational motion of the rod through this little crank slider mechanism here. So we know that the primary rod coming from the motor is going to be translating sideways and we know that this part of the flange is connected to the body. So you can see as I move this back and forth how the pivot of the wiper will rotate and that will wipe the screen. So now in order to take the translational motion of the primary rod and transfer it to the driver's side secondary rod there are two ball joints that connect these two here. So you can see now when I translate the primary rod how it will move the secondary rod back and forth. Now looking at this from a mechanical perspective, if we have these two points fixed to the body here, this part of the mechanism forms a four bar linkage. That is, the body is the first linkage, then we have two short arms over here that move in parallel, and then we have the long linkage in the middle here. Now this bar here is called the push-pull rod. Over here on this side we have the crank slider assembly that takes this little offset here as a crank, 
and that will slide the push-pull rod back and forth. Now moving on to the wiper arms, we've got this spring here that's responsible for putting pressure against the windshield. Now this steel wiper blade here is actually made up of a bunch of small little pieces here that join into a whipple tree mechanism. Now what that does is it will allow for even pressure points across the surface of the blade to allow for a clean wipe. Now here we have the wiper switch, there's four main positions. Now I'm going to open up the switch here. You can see on the inside of the switch we have these two contact points that's on the lever and that will contact these points here depending on what position it's in. Now on the back here we have the circuit that controls the timer for the intermittent function. So here we have a quick wiring diagram of what's going on inside of the wiper switch here as well as the wiper motor assembly over here. Now we've got a 12 volt feed that comes down to the cam here. Now if the motor is not in the home position and the switch is off it will actually send power back to the motor to rotate it until it hits that home position and then that cam will automatically break the circuit stopping the motor in its tracks at the home position. Finally over here we have a bunch of diodes, resistors and capacitors that determine the intermittent setting. Now here we have the giant plastic tank that holds your washer fluid. On this side here we have the low level float. This float floats in fluid and in the up position here you can see that the resistance is equal to infinity and the light will not turn on. And then when the fluid reaches the bottom part this magnet here completes a circuit in a reed switch and that will cause the resistance to go to zero turning the light on your dashboard. Now also attached to the reservoir is the windshield washer pump. <clears throat> now the washer pump is pretty simple. We apply 12 volts here. There's a little DC motor inside that spins a little turbine. Now I'm going to chop it open to see what's inside. Now I'm going to take apart the motor. And then we have the DC electric motor. You can see this is the little turbine blade that turns around to provide the flow from the inlet to the outlet.